everyone. Welcome back, and thank you for growing with Princeton Microgreens. Uh, it means a lot to us that you're here and uh, that you like our videos. Uh, so today, something special. Um, we actually put a poll up on YouTube uh, about a week or two ago, and on uh, what we want, you know, the viewers want us to grow next. And uh, popcorn won pretty astoundingly. So um, we need a few things to grow popcorn. Um, it is a pretty easy grow as long as you have the right tools, um, but the right tools aren't so bad. Um, so first off, we need our blackout uh, dome here, which um, we have gone and I just posted the video, so I'll put the link up here uh, on how to actually make this. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Anybody could really do it. Uh, so go ahead and check that video out uh, so you know how to make your blackout dome. Um, and everything else is is about this, we have to keep extremely dark because the goal is to that popcorn never gets really exposed to light um, and it stays yellow. Uh, once popcorn starts getting exposed to light, it turns green and it just becomes very coarse and it's not something you want to eat. Think of it like um, you know if you were to have a, a stalk of corn, for instance, and that outside husk that you husk off your corn. Uh, that's, that's something you would want to eat. For, you would never want to eat that. So um, if your corn gets exposed to light, that's going to be the texture that you're going to be eating, and it just doesn't taste good, doesn't feel good in your mouth. Ugh, it's just you don't want that. So again, we want to keep corn blocked out for the entire grow. Um, first, uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to soak our pea seed uh, for 12 hours. So we're actually going to use um, about 200 grams of seed here. And I get all my seed um, from True Leaf Market. Um, a lot of people ask us where we get our seed from. Pretty much get all of our seed from True Leaf. We absolutely love True Leaf. Their customer service is astounding. Um, anytime I've ever had an issue where like something didn't germinate correctly, um, they made sure that they took care of it right away for us. Uh, but that really doesn't happen often. Their seed is, is near perfect um, because they test everything really well um, before they go ahead and, and ship it out. So um, anyways, we'll go ahead and zero our scale. Zero here with our mason jar, obviously. If we use a mason jar to soak the seed. And again, we do about 200 grams. So that's going to be about 130, a little bit more. 193, 200, eh, that's fine. So, now that we have our 200 grams of seed, we're just going to take our water here, fill this up all the way. Ooh, that's a fun sound. lid on. All right. And then we literally just going to put that aside for 12 hours. Um, and we'll come back shortly and we'll go ahead and sew it. All right. So bear back. Okay. Welcome back to 12 hours later. Uh, we have been letting our corn sit uh, again for the last 12 hours. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drain it out wash it out a little bit, um, you know, just to make sure there's nothing on there, just clean it off a little, and then uh, sew it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and dump our corn into the strainer here. Forgive me as I don't have a sink over here, so <laughs> I, I kind of just put this little tray here and it, it works just fine as an artificial sink, right? So, and then we'll go ahead and just wash these off. There we go, just like so. Shake it to drain it a little bit. Doesn't really matter if there's water in here, right? We're obviously going to water them. I just kind of spread it out here as much as possible. go and we just give it a good shake look at that that works pretty well huh 
I'm going to use my hands to spread it out a little bit more. And what we're actually going to do is um, we're going to actually put medium on top of this. Uh, not too many people actually put medium on top of their corn. Uh, but I really like to because I've actually found that corn is prone a little bit uh, to molding. And I found that if you put coir on top of the corn, uh, I don't see hardly any mold at all. Um, it actually almost stops it from molding, um, from what I've, from what I've noticed. So that's what I do. And corn's so big and husky that, you know, uh, putting it under uh, coir really doesn't do much. It doesn't really affect, uh, you know, the length of you know, how long this takes to grow as opposed to other mother microgreens when you, uh, when you bury them. You know, for instance, cilantro, when you bury it, it takes a good 10 days for it to break through, you know, the coir. Um, but opposed to, uh, you know, corn, it breaks through in a few days. Um, you know, we only really put this in blackout for, you know, about five days, I would, I would say, right around there. So, I want to say blackout, I should say, germination. So, we'll go ahead and do the best we can here. We'll fill in the holes in a second. Don't need too much. Just a nice little thin layer just to make sure we cover them. Keeps that mold in check, like I said. All right. We are almost there. And we usually, what I do here when I'm almost done, I got a few little pieces showing. I just grab a little handful and just start sprinkling it on any spots that I see. No big deal. Nice and easy. Good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not like we're trying to shed... Um, you know, the whole of the seed when we're growing popcorn. That's really not the goal here. So we're just trying to keep that mold down. Okay. So now that we have the popcorn sewed with our courier on top, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on mist here. We're going to give it a nice good soaking. Now we're actually going to only um, water corn about twice this entire grow. Uh, and the reason why is because what happens is, is when we put the blackout dome on, um, you know, any water that usually kind of evaporates out of your coir, you know, a, a lot of times what happens is your microgreens don't actually use a lot of the water that you put in. A lot of it is actually just evaporating off. Um, but with, when we have the blackout dome on the entire time, it kind of creates like this small little, like, I don't know, like ecosystem or something where um, anything that gets kind of evaporated up gets caught by that blackout dome blackout dome and then just kind of goes right back in uh, so that you don't really need much water when growing this at all. So we do it uh, enough water for germination and this will get us through five days and then after that we'll bottom water it once with nutrients and then we put the blackout dome on and we'll go from there. So uh, now that we went ahead and uh, gave this a good misting to get through uh, germination uh, I'm going to go ahead and put on a tray and again while I'm using these black trays is because we want to make sure it stays as dark as possible we never want any of this corn getting um, you know any sort of light that's the that's the objective when growing corn is to keep it yellow don't expose it to light and don't let it photosynthesize not even one bit of it so we got that on there we got our weight on there 
Okay, now we're just gonna take it and put it on the shelf. And we'll come back in roughly five days or so and uh, we'll see how it's doing and we'll probably go ahead and put that dome on. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to day number five of our popcorn grow. Uh, so this has been in germination for the last four days, days one through four. Today is day five. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and take um, our, our weight off here. Um, I can actually say here that we could have probably done this yesterday on day four, because um, as I'm looking here, you can actually start to see some of the popcorn kind of coming up through the edges. And that's not necessarily a good thing because we want to keep this dark. So if we have it coming up through the edges, these little parts might turn green because they're kind of being exposed to the light, right? Um, so it's, sometimes it's actually good for me to make mistakes because I can show you what not to do, right? <laughs> so um, so I, would, I would probably take this out probably day four, you know, just checking on day four. Today, say it's no big deal, just one day. It's not going to hurt it long term. Um, but let's go ahead and take the weight off here. Great. And this is this is actually really good. I mean, I have like two or three pieces over here in a corner, um, but this is this is perfectly fine, right? So, so what we're looking for here is um, we're looking for all of these, you know, little stalks, I guess you can say, of, of corn to come up through that medium. Um, and because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to keep the corn um, down and under the medium. That way, there's no risk of any mold or any issues. Um, I find that the medium, like I said before, really protects you from that, which I don't see any issues, no mold, no nothing, which is great for this. Um, and at the same time, when it comes up through the medium, the reason why we keep the weight on is because what will happen is, is sometimes the stalks will actually lift the medium up and that's a bad thing because you got to kind of push it down. Um, it just gets really messy and it's, it's not something you want to deal with. Uh, so that's definitely why we keep weight on top to kind of keep that medium down as well. Uh, so now that this is pretty much ready to go into blackout, um, this never sees the light, like we talked about. Um, it, it basically just stays in blackout for the next, I'm going to say, four to five days. Um, and then once it's, you know, done at that point, you're just ready to harvest it. So it's as easy as this. First, we want to give it water. So we're going we're gonna to check it, and it definitely needs water. It's, it's bone dry down here. Crop's still good, but we're bone dry. Obviously, we haven't watered it. We haven't watered it these first five days at all. Because um, again, when I do my crops, I give it water once and it stays through germination the entire time. You don't need to worry about it. So I'm gonna give it quite a bit of water, um, probably close to two cups. And the reason why is this. Again, we watered this once this entire time, the last five days. Once I put this dome on here and black it out, I'm not gonna water it again. What it's going to do is it's actually like any water that kind of gets sucked up and evaporated up, this dome is going to catch and this crop is going to stay very moist and very wet inside this, um, this dome for the next five days. You don't need to water it again. You're literally just giving this water twice this entire time. Once when we started and once when we take it out of germination and that's it. So very easy crop to grow as long as you have your blackout dome. So, okay, so we've watered it, got our nice handy dandy blackout dome that we made. Okay, um, I usually don't vent this at all. Uh, I've not found a need to vent it. I haven't had any mold issues once I get to this stage here. Um, and the problem is if, if you do vent it, um, light tends to peek in and you'll get the crop that kind of peeks out and starts to turn green here and there. Uh, so you lose a little bit of crop when you do that. Uh, but you know, you can experiment on your own and see what works for you. Um, I don't think you should get any mold issues from this point forward. Uh, but you know, you never know. Who knows, you know, I'm not sure where you live, the humidity's like, everybody's, you know, uh, environment's a little bit different. So, so we're just gonna take it and just put it right on the shelf. just like so, and we'll come back in another four to five days and uh, hopefully we can harvest it. I mean, it's as easy as that. So we'll see you soon. All right, we're back for day number nine of our popcorn grow. And to be honest, I'm quite excited because we're about to do our big unveil. Uh, you know, you're usually not peeking at this. You're just, you're just kind of blindly letting this go for four to five days and just hoping uh, that it does what it's supposed to do. Um, 
The reason why is because when you lift this up, it is a pain to put back on because the, the crop just starts falling over everywhere. And you kind of got to like hold it up and put the dome back on. It, it takes two people, literally. Uh, so I usually don't do much. I might kind of lift and peek at it. Um, how I know it's done though is because I can actually see this blackout dome is starting to lift up. And if it's starting to lift up, then we definitely know it's tall enough. So let's go ahead and lift it up here. Dun, 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 holy moly, look at that, <laughs> holy cow, it's huge, that's so much popcorn, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, I'm actually looking at this, this has grown quite a bit, I could have 100% harvested this yesterday, um, it obviously has grown a little bit, almost too tall, we're definitely not going to cut this all the way at the bottom here, um, just because it is so tall, uh, it's no big deal, uh, that's the cool part about some of these crops that we're growing is they are a little forgiving and how you grow them. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I would say definitely harvest this perhaps day eight and not day nine. Um, just food for thought there. So, um, but yeah, look at it. Look, it's, it's, it's wonderful. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get a few things. Okay, so we gathered up everything that we need here to start harvesting. Um, we have our 100% uh, biodegradable compostable containers here uh, that we get from uh, greenpaperproducts.com. Uh, you can find the link below in the description box. Again, uh, I love these because, you know, our customers are very, um, you know, they're very knowledgeable about, you know, not using plastic, I should say. They, they really shy away from plastic, you know, which is understood. You know, we want to keep the environment clean as possible, uh, but these will break down in a few months all by themselves. You just throw them right away. Uh, I believe they're made from like cornstarch or something along that line. So. Uh, pretty cool. I promise you, your customers, customers will love these. It's a little bit more expensive by just a smidge, but it is well worth it. Uh, again, your, your customers will rape about them. My customers rape about them. So I think it's really important when putting together a product. It's, it's all aspects, right? You can have something that looks great and everything, and then I have a customer that comes up and goes, well, I really don't like those plastic containers. Well, they're not plastic. And Boom, they're already sucked, they're sucked in and they're drawn into a conversation. Next thing you know, they're buying. So it's all about the little things. So we also have these little uh, food safe, you know, do not eat safe packs, I guess. They suck up the moisture out of the container and it makes sure that your uh, microgreens are as, you know, dry as possible um, for a, uh, you know, it, it basically helps them last for a couple weeks. Um, so. Now, what I will say about corn is this. So I'm actually harvesting these um, for an event today, okay? Um, they don't need labels. They just want to just give me corn, give me big containers, right? So normally what I would do with this is because this has been in the dome for a long period of time, it's very wet and very moist here. Um, it's, you do not want to cut these and package them like this if you want to store these long term. Now, because I'm using these today, I'm really not worried about it, okay? But normally what I would do is I have a fan over here, I would just blow it across these greens uh, for about a good half hour probably to an hour. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about these going from yellow to green and from a half hour to hour, so it doesn't really matter where you do it. If you want to do it in a darker room, it's kind of up to you. Um, but if once these are dry, then you want to package them. Um, and that's if you're going to be selling them, you know, to a restaurant that's going to use them over the next few days or to a farmer's market and so forth. Um, now popcorn also, even if you dry it out and even if you package it perfectly, okay, this is not a microgreen that's going to last for a long period of time. Some of our other microgreens, you know, I have pea that will last up to four weeks, um, in the refrigerator. Okay. I see popcorn starting to go bad after day five or six in the refrigerator, no matter how well you package it, okay? That's just the reality of popcorn. Um, I can't seem to get it, you know, any better than that. So, um, you know, you need to be conscious of that when you sell to your customers. Let them know, say, hey, you know, if this is something you're buying or if this is something you're using as a restaurant, you know, this is not going to last very long. Um, so if your restaurant's open, you know, Tuesday through Sunday, um, you know, you would probably almost deliver it on Tuesday morning and hopefully it stays good throughout Sunday, you know, something along that line, or you might have to deliver twice a week. Uh, so just food for thought when you're making popcorn. Okay, we've talked enough. 
So let's go ahead and start harvesting this. Okay, so we'll go ahead. You know, I really don't care to weigh this all that much because I'm just giving this all to one customer. Um, normally I would sell this, you know, in about four ounce containers um, when I do sell this. Uh, but because I'm, I'm just basically just bottling this up and putting it into a package and just, you know, bringing it over to somebody, um, I'm really not too concerned. I'm just trying to get these two containers as evenly as possible. Um, and then when you do harvest, you see how I grabbed it and I didn't cut it all the way at the bottom. Um, it gets a little thick at the bottom. You only want to cut mostly the feathers. And you say, I say feathers because they look like feathers. It's, it's actually pretty cool here. So uh, this, is, this is a tough one to package. Um, sometimes when I put it in these packages here, um, I'll actually have to fold the tops down a little bit or almost cut the bottoms a little bit shorter uh, to accommodate. So they're a really tall microgreen. So you have to be you know, wary of your, of your packaging a little bit when you are, um, when you are cutting this. So. But man, they are so pretty. And they taste very, very sweet. You can actually see when I grab these. Like, remember how I said we watered these one time? I know you remember that. We watered the, well, we watered on day one and we watered on day five. And look at my hands. My hands are like soaking wet from touching these, right? That just goes to show you, like, I only watered this twice in the entire nine days that we grew these, right? So. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Sometimes if you do get a little too low here, you'll see some of like these, I don't know what, if what I really call them here, but they're almost like roots that kind of stick out from the stalk a little bit. I, what I do is my little trick is I stick my, um, my stalks here right on the side of the tray and I just cut right against the tray and it almost acts as almost like little mini scissors in a way and it just cuts away stuff. So I don't need to sit there and you know, go bum, bum, bum. Let's put it up right against the tray and cut. So. This is definitely a one-off order for us. Um, I don't get popcorn um, asked about quite often, um, if at all. This is kind of a rare grow. Uh, I'm not sure what they're using it for, but they said they definitely want it. So you can see, I, to be honest, um, I, I use the packages in four ounce containers here. And uh, I was hoping that this would do the trick but I think I might have to go back to the four ounce containers just because these are so large. Uh, so let me go ahead. I'm actually going to grab a four ounce container really quick. All right, guys. So I have switched this up a little bit. Um, I've gone with the traditional four ounce tray that we usually use here, this package. And the reason why I use this one is because it kind of lets them lay flat and it's a little bit easier to fold them up. You'll see what I mean here. So. We'll grab them like so, lay them down, and we're just gonna pretend for a second that we're putting a good four ounces in here. Again, I really don't care how much is in these because they're just going to one person, so um, they just wanted a full tray cut. I think it's about 112 grams, let's say, I think for, for four ounces, so. Eh, about 117, that's fine, it's no big deal. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about how much it weighs. And then usually what I do here is, I try to do it in the frame for you so you can see. I just kind of make sure that they're up against the corner here, just grab the entire leaf, and I just kind of like fold them down a little bit. It doesn't hurt them because they're, they're very leaf-like, they just go right back as soon as they come out. I just kind of tuck the corner in like so. I mean, they're so big, right? So it is what it is. Um, kind of shake it up a little bit to kind of loosen them up. And it kind of makes it the presentation look a little bit better in here. But look how beautiful that is. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, this, 
this sells pretty well when I make it. The problem is, is that a lot of people don't like it all that much. And I guess what I mean is by they don't like it all that much is the flavor is kind of too intense for people. The sweetness kind of has an overbearing, I don't, you know, I've had it compared to toothpaste, believe it or not. It's so sweet and it has almost that fluoride flavor that it leaves behind as an aftertaste in your mouth. Um, I'm not a fan of it particularly, uh, but it does go really well on some dishes and some dishes, depending on what you put it on, um, it, it kind of enhances the flavor in a positive way, not a negative way. But I guess when you just eat it just straight out from the box, it does have that, uh, that really overbearing sweetness to it that leaves a little bit of an aftertaste in your mouth. And not a lot of people like a farmer's market know how to cook in a way to really um, you know, use these in a positive way. So I, I found that when I started growing these, a lot of people loved them because of how they looked. And then they came back and they said they just really didn't like them. Uh, so now I just do them as a special order uh, for, for restaurants and such. So um, I won't bore you with making another container here. Uh, we're probably going to get easily two four ounce containers. Uh, I would sell a four ounce container for, um, you know, and anywhere from 10 to $12 between whether or not I'm going to wholesale it or not. Um, if I have a restaurant that's doing $100 of microgreens a week, I usually uh, wholesale them uh, and sell them wholesale prices. So I knock about $2 off a container uh, for anything, any orders over $100 a week. Uh, so and that, that kind of gets restaurants sometimes from that, you know, $60 to $70 range into, you know what, just give me $100 worth then because they'll get them a little bit cheaper. Uh, everybody wins, I guess. So, um, so yeah, you know, um, I really hope you enjoyed, you know, watching our video on on how to make that blackout dome and, and how we actually incorporated it into the grow and, and how we grow these popcorn uh, greens, or I should say yellows, right? <laughs> uh, so anyways, um, looking forward to our next grow. I already have some ideas in the back of my head. Uh, so, you know, I hope this, you know, again, you, you learned something from this one and, uh, you know, give it a shot, give it a shot. She, just cause I don't like it, doesn't mean you won't like it. So I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It's a super fun one. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye bye. Hello everyone, Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.